The Science Success Center, with funding from Title V, presents The Cellular Basis of Reproduction and Inheritance, a Biology Workshop. The contents of the subsequent slides we'll be covering are the cell cycle, mitosis, and meiosis. Why do cells divide? Cells divide for cell growth, repair, and replacement of lost or damaged cells. Keep in mind that cells may only arise from pre-existing cells. Asexual reproduction versus sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction gives rise to genetically identical offspring and only one parent exists. Bacteria, for example, undergoes binary fission, an example of asexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction, the offspring are not genetically identical and two eukaryotic organisms are required. Binary fission. First, the cell replicates its DNA. Following is a cytoplasmic membrane elongation, separating the DNA molecules. A cross wall forms in a process of membrane invagination. Finally, the cross walls forms completely and a daughter cell is born. Chromosomes of eukaryotes duplicate with each cell division. Most of the time, chromosomes exist as a diffuse mass of long, thin fibers. This material is called chromatin, which is a combination of DNA and protein molecules. The DNA molecule of each chromosome is copied, and new protein molecules attach as needed. The result is that each chromosome now consists of two copies called sister chromatids, which contain identical copies of the DNA molecule. The two chromatids are joined together especially tightly at a narrow waist called the central mirror. The eukaryotic cell cycle has two stages, the interphase and the mitotic phase M. The cell spends 90% of its life in the interphase. The interphase is subdivided into G1, S, and G2. Both G1 and G2 phases pertain to acquiring nutrients for cell division. In the S phase, the cell's DNA is duplicated, known as DNA synthesis. The remaining 10% of the cell's life cycle is the mitotic phase M, performing cytokinesis and mitosis. The eukaryotic cell cycle. Interphase, the period of cell growth where the cell synthesizes new molecules and organelles. Within the nucleus, the chromosomes are duplicated but cannot be distinguished because they are still in the form of chromatin. Prophase. Chromatin fibers become more tightly coiled and folded, forming discrete chromosomes as well the nuclei disappears and each duplicated chromosome appears as two identical sister chromatids joined together at the central mirror. Mitotic spindles begin to form as microtubules begin to elongate from the centrosomes and the central mirrors begin to move toward opposite poles. Prometaphase, the nuclear envelope breaks into fragments and disappears. Microtubules extending from the centrosomes begin to reach the now highly condensed chromosomes and attach themselves at the protein structure located on the central mirror called a kinetochore. Chromosomes then begin to align themselves at the center of the cell. Metaphase, the mitotic spindle is fully formed and chromosomes reside on the metaphase plate. Anaphase begins when the two centromeres of each centrosome come apart, separating the sister chromatids. Each sister chromatid is now considered a daughter chromosome, and microtubules attached at the kinetochores bring the daughter chromosomes to their designated pole. Telophase and cytokinesis begins when two identical nuclei are formed for each cell, and the nuclear envelope starts to form. What follows is the separation of the two daughter cells known as the cleavage furrow. The eukaryotic cell cycle is analogous to a control system. Growth factors and checkpoints regulate the cell cycle. Checkpoints are located in the G1 phase, the G2 phase, and the last checkpoint is in the mitotic phase. Most people would consider the G1 checkpoint to be the most important checkpoint because when the cell continues past the G1 checkpoint, 90% of the time the cell will complete the cell cycle. 
When the cell is stopped at the G1 checkpoint, the cell will enter a dormant stage called GO. The human life cycle may begin at the multicellular diploid adult level, and with the use of meiosis, haploid gametes are made in the gonads. The haploid cells then recombine, a process known as fertilization to make a diploid zygote. Mitosis and development will give rise to a new human adult, and the cycle will continue. Meiosis 1. In interphase, the chromosomes duplicate, making two identical sister chromatids. In prophase 1, the most complex phases of meiosis and typically occupies over 90% of the time required for meiotic cell division. In a process called synapsis, homologous chromosomes, each composed of two sister chromatids, come together as pairs. The resulting structure, consisting of four chromatids, is called a tetrad. During synapsis, chromatids of homologous chromosomes exchange segments in a process called crossing over. Crossing over rearranges genetic information. Meanwhile, the nuclear envelope breaks into fragments and the mitotic spindle is forming. Metaphase 1. At metaphase 1, the chromosome tetrads are aligned on the metaphase plate. Spindle microtubules are attached to the kinetochores at the central mirrors. Anaphase 1 of meiosis is marked by the migration of chromosomes toward the two poles of the cell. However, the sister chromatids making up each double chromosome remain attached to their centromere. Only the tetrads split up. Meiosis 2. During telophase 1 and cytokinesis, a set of haploid chromosomes arrive at opposite poles of the cell and a cleavage furrow forms at the middle of the cell. As a result, two non-identical daughter cells are made. In prophase 2 of the daughter cell's chromosomes, condense again and the nuclear envelope breaks down. Remember that meiosis 2 starts with a haploid cell. Metaphase 2 has the chromosomes aligned on the metaphase plate, with the kinetochores of the sister chromatids of each chromosome pointing toward opposite poles. In anaphase 2, the central mirrors of sister chromatids finally separate, and the sister chromatids of each pair now individual daughter chromosomes move toward opposite poles of the cell. In telophase 2, nuclei form at the cell poles and cytokinesis occurs at the same time. There are now four daughter cells, each with the haploid number of chromosomes. Due to crossing over of homologous pairs in prophase 1, tetrads are formed and are held together at the site of crossing over, now known as chiasma. Shown is a tetrad with coat color and eye color genes labeled. The DNA molecules of two non-sister chromatids, one maternal in red and one paternal in blue, break at the same location. Immediately, the two broken chromatids join together in a new way. In effect, the two homologous segments trade places, or cross over, producing hybrid chromosomes with new combinations of maternal and paternal genes. When the homologous chromosomes separate in anaphase 1, each contains a new segment originating from its homolog. Finally, in meiosis 2, the sister chromatids separate each going to a different gamete. Karyotyping is an ordered display of magnified images of an individual's chromosomes arranged in pairs, starting with the longest. A karyotype shows the chromosomes condensed and doubled as they appear in metaphase of mitosis. We use karyotypes to detect chromosomal abnormalities that may lead to serious conditions. Non-disjunction is when the members of a chromosome pair fail to separate. A non-disjunction may occur in meiosis 1 or meiosis 2, both leading to abnormalities in chromosomal numbers of the gametes made. Abnormal numbers of sex chromosomes. Table 8.22 shows abnormalities of sex chromosome number in humans. Klinefelter syndrome, for example, is when a male has an extra X chromosome, but sometimes an abnormal number in sex chromosomes has no effects on a person. An example is a man with an extra Y chromosome. 
alterations of chromosomes. One example is a deletion of a segment on a chromosome. Another alteration could be that a chromosome makes a copy of a segment and adds it to a homologous chromosome resulting in a duplication. Lastly, a chromosome may confuse the order of the segments, resulting in an alteration known as inversion. Thank you everyone for watching. Come visit us at the Science Success Center if you have any questions. Good luck on all your studies and tune in for the next workshop.